Hi guys, I'm Wiser Attacking Me, and welcome to Doki Doki Literature Club. We've made our second poem now. Hopefully everyone's attitudes have calmed down a bit. Yo, Sire, looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just not used to you. I'm just still not used to you being in the club. That's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always simple things with you anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. You come with me to buy a snack. No thanks. Eh? But that's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Eh? eh? Well, why that all of a sudden? No reason, really. Wanted to look at it. Ah, uh -uh. She nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open, then turns it upside down lets the contents spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. <laughs> I knew it. I can see right through you, Sire. <laughs> it's not fair. How'd you even know? It's simple. You had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming in the club room. So either you're not hungry and want an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. There's one more thing. You're always hungry. So that only leaves, leaves the one option. Ah! <laughs> Aw, poor Sayori. <laughs> poor girl never knows what's... Never knows I'm on her. I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. Well, no, that's not necessarily true. Hi, Yuri! Yuri suddenly gets, or suddenly giggles. Eh? I didn't notice that, notice that she was listening in. The face is in her book, as always. Ah, uh, uh, I wasn't listening or anything. It's just something in my book. Yuri, tell her sort of let me borrow some money. That's, don't get me involved like that, sir. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. Frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough for retribution. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did I just... I didn't mean that. <laughs> I got too absorbed into my book. Ooh. <laughs> really, really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. Doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. Why do you say that? Of course it's... Of course it's a good thing. You were right, though. I did something bad now to accept the revolution. I don't think that's the... That's the phrase you're trying to go for. Retribution. That! I was gonna say, wrong word. Still coming from you, Sayori. Guess there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. Girl, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But, but, you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. But there's something smacks her in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Ow! What was? Eh? A cookie? Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. <laughs> Is this a miracle? <laughs> it's because I paid my restitution. <laughs> Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was gonna, I was just gonna give it to you, but then I heard you blab about cupcakes. It's totally worth seeing your reaction, though. But Natsuki, that's so nice of you. So happy. She hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Sayori, Sayori rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good. Mm. She, Sayori suddenly clasps her hand over her mouth. I bit my tongue. <laughs> You're going, you're going through a lot over just one cookie. She takes a bite of her own cookie. Yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez, makers can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, still really happy you shared this one with me. <laughs> she gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki, then wraps her arms around her. Ah, jeez. <laughs> I get it, I get it. Cookie's still in hand, Natsuki. She's up to nudge Sayori off of her. Oh. Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. Hey! Did you seriously just do that? 
Mouthful, Sayuri trots away to safety. Yuri, Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monika, can you tell Sayuri? Eh? Natsuki glances around. Monika isn't in the club room. Eh. Where is Monika anyway? Good question. Have, you, have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. It's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She's probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Eh? You don't think she... she has a... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. No! You're all desirable in your own special ways. Don't think like that. <laughs> That's true. Excuse me? Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? Monika chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. But boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monika quizzically glances at me. Ah, uh, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Ah, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. Must have not heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? Wasn't aware you played music as well, Monika. I don't, really. I just kind of started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. I kind of know how to play piano. It's hard as hell. <laughs> That's so cool. You should play something for us, Monika. Monika? That's... She looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down. <laughs> Monika smiles sweetly at me. Uh... I didn't mean to put pressure- I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. <laughs> Don't worry, I've been practicing a whole lot recently. I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks! So I didn't miss anything, did I? No, no not- not really. Choose to leave Sayori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. Looks like everyone's already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished her entire cookie. What is a cookie? I doubt it's been that much time. Yuri's back to her book and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. The closet? <laughs> hey Yuri. Eh? Uh, I suddenly noticed that Yuri's reading a different book from the one we've been reading together. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Eh, no. I was kind of just waiting for you. If that's the case, why don't we go ahead and get started? Yes, let's. Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all. Thanks very much. There's one There's one thing that can make my reading time here any better. It's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention for yourself as well. Yuri stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow watch her watch as she retrieves a small water pitcher from the shelf. The kind with a filter inside. Can you hold this for a second? Sure. She hands me, hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. I'm gonna pu going to plug this in at the teacher's desk, then we'll go get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down on the teacher's desk. I simply watch her movements. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking mannerisms. <laughs> Especially because of her long legs, Yuri appears elegant and methodical. Okay, may I have the water pitcher? Thanks, I'll be right back. Well, um, I might... Uh, might as well walk with you. Eh, why not? Shall we go then? Yeah. Where are you off to? Or where are you two off to? Uh, just you was gonna make some tea, so I suddenly realized how weird it sounds explaining this to Monika. Just get filling the water pitcher. Ah, okay. Sorry, I was just a bit curious. That kind of that's kind of a one-person job, isn't it? That's Monika. Please mind your own business for once. <laughs> or do you want me to? Or do you want to tell me there's something wrong with helping involve Aizawa in club activities? Eh? eh? Aw, oh, she, now she's fighting for personal time. My mouth games. I suppose there's nothing wrong with that. Hm. Let's go. Yuri quickly exits the room and I follow. She got assertive all of a sudden.
Yeah, I knew it. I knew she couldn't maintain that. Once in the hallway, she suddenly puts her forehead against the wall. Spoke without thinking. How could I say something like that? Eerie. I just... Something about the way she said that. It made me feel so irritated. What's wrong with me? No, Yuri. I think you did the right thing. I wasn't expecting it, but it's also not right from Anika to judge people like that. Aiza, how come even I do something bad? You're being nice to me. Because nothing that you do is as bad as you make it seem in your head. Nobody's perfect. We all have emotions, we can't always hide them anyway. Or hide them away. But you always amplify things in your head. Your mind turns a light rain shower into a hurricane. Uh, n no. Wouldn't you hate me for something as terrible as that? Why would I hate you? Can't hate someone for having emotions. What kind of friend would do that? A friend, you say? Uh, um. Yuri lifts her head. Eyes what? I really like being friends with you. <laughs> Thanks, Yuri. I like being friends with you, too. I feel kind of awkward saying something like that. But I'm doing my best to help Yuri feel better. Anyway, uh, yeah. Shall we go? Yeah. Yuri and I walked to the nearest water fountain. Once we fill out the water pitcher, we turned we turn to the classroom. I said, do you like oolong tea? Ah, yeah. Anything's fine. Very well. She sets the temperature on the kettle to 200 degrees. Now it's time to get the teapot. You really do this properly, don't you? Of course. Shouldn't do any less when I'm making tea for others. Even if I'm not an expert on tea or anything. In that case, you'll only be, only be even more impressed. Ah, perhaps I will. Yuri fetches the teapot and begins measuring the tea leaves. To my surprise, she even starts humming a little to herself. You must be in a good mood now. Is that so? I was letting it show, and you noticed. I was doing a bit of thinking, and I decided I would try expressing myself a little bit more. Turns out it's not very hard for me to do. <laughs> it's you who's around anyway. Ah, that's great, Yuri. Just don't push yourself too much. You're always worrying about me, Aizo. It's very endearing. That's... Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this. Watch Yuri pour a cup of tea for each of us. Aizo, I have another request. What if we sit on the floor today? Eh? Why's that? It's a little bit easier on my back. Can we... I can read, read with my back against the wall rather than bending over at my desk. Uh, sorry, I didn't realize. No worries. I just have back pain fairly regularly, so I do my best to manage it. Is that so? I wonder why that is. I think I know. It's mostly because of my... Aha! Uh, uh -huh. Your posture, right? Always have to like that while reading. Yes! I have terrible reading posture. So that's why we should sit on the floor. Come on, why are you lying like that? I know what it is. I'll go ahead and get the book. I retrieved the book from my bag. There's some chocolate as well. It's a bag of small chocolate candies I kept hidden from Sayori's candy radar. <laughs> I take it since it'll go well with the tea. Yuri and I then sit against the wall, teacups at our sides. As if in sync, we assume the same reading position as last time. Each holding one half of the book, except this time, my bodies are even closer to each other. I can't see too well. Yuri slides a little closer till our shoulders are touching. How am I supposed to focus on reading like this? Yuri was always kind of cute, but when she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. Your teacup. She hands me my teacup. Holding it with my hand, it's not holding the book, I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus. Now, now I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch her chest. <laughs> Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. She wears her intense reading expression, and I can only presume the world around her, around her has faded away. I use all of my willpower to focus on reading. After a few minutes, I finally managed to relax a little. I put the teacup between my legs and focus, er, and fumble with the chocolate wrapper. Ah, uh, sorry. Brief I briefly let go of the book to finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Aw, that's... that's okay, I won't take any. Eh, are you sure? Well, if I touch it, then it might... smudge... it might get smudges on the pages. Ah, oh, you're right. I didn't even think about that. My bad. 
No need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? You sure? Of course. Aw, look at her. Yuri opens the book with both hands. She holds it so that I don't have to have any harder of a time reading from it. But it was, as a result, her left arm is practically resting on the top of my leg. Well, in that case, Yuri's already totally focused on reading again. Take a chocolate candy and pop it in my mouth. Then I take another chocolate and hold it up to Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her, lip, parts her lips as if, as if this situation was completely natural. That means I can't stop here. I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth. Just like, just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. Eh? <laughs> oh, now, now I got your attention. Her expression suddenly breaks. Did, did I just? Yuri looks at me like she needs to confirm what just happened. Um, Azua, sorry. Guess I shouldn't have done that. Uh, that's, well, you were just helping. That's something that friends do, right? I mean, not really in this kind of context, but yeah, that's all it was. Yeah, then you don't need to stop or anything. I, I see. The situation has gotten really tense. Yuri tries to return to the book, but I can tell just by her expression that she can't even focus now. My heart is pounding. I nervously take another chocolate between my fingers, but this time Yuri's eyes meet mine. Oh, how did it even come to this? Yuri doesn't avert her gaze. I notice her chest rising and falling to the rhythm of her breaths. Here is my arm. Like before, Yuri parts her lips. It's different this time. I take the chocolate and place it in her mouth. Feel her hot breath on my fingers. Oh, okay. Okay, everyone. Ah. Yuri jolts back. <laughs> time to share poems. Oh, yeah, that was a thing we did. Oh, damn it. All right. Isaac, you can help Yuri put away the tea stuff, right? Y yeah, of course. Okay, thanks. The spell is abruptly broken. I'll, I'll take care of the cups. Yeah. Yuri picks the tea cups from the floor. I pick up the bag of chocolates. In the end, we hastily clean up without so much as, as a word between us. I get the feeling that neither of us... I get the feeling that this is something neither of us will have the courage to bring up. Who should I show my poem to first? <sighs> um... We could do it in reverse this time. Just saying. Monika? Hi again, Isaac. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. Happy you're buying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem, poem to Monika. Alright, this one's good. Feels like you're not only getting more comfortable with your style, but the imagery's better than the last one I read. Just wondering, but have you been finding inspiration in Yuri's writing style? Hmm, I guess so. You can't deny she's talented. I'd say out of what I know of all their writing styles, that Yuri's is pretty close to what mine was in um when I took a bunch of creative writing classes. Yeah, totally. I think her poems are the most romantic. That's the best way to describe it. She's like a totally different person when she picks up a pen. I noticed that too. When she's talking about literature, it's like a light turns on inside her. Mm-hmm. Sadly, it's hard to get much of a personal conversation out of her. Trust me, I've tried. Who knows what goes on in that head of hers? I hope you don't mean that in a bad way. No, of course not. I just meant I wish she didn't keep so much to herself. Still, defending her like that. You must be pretty into her. Eh? You completely misunderstood. <laughs> Calm down, I'm kidding. Besides, I'm pretty sure she's already got a boyfriend. Wait, really? A fictional one, anyway. Ah, she's got a husband, though. Monika kind of, kind of whispers that last part to me. It's just a hunch, but... Well, there's not really anything wrong with that. Are you telling me you got a husband, though, too? Oh, well, I know. I was just saying... But anyway... You want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do, too. Alright, let's take a look. Oh, this is a long one. Okay. Save me. 
The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing, red, green, blue. An endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violently, or violent, grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing, sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalk playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless. Load me? Hmm. Hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just the kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. Really? Really? <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling, or a conversation with the reader. So putting it in that way, not every poem's about something. Anyway, here's Monika's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. Is this a forewarning? I feel like this is a foreshadowing, a forewarning of stuff to come. You never know and you might need to change your mind. Okay? Or well, something unexpected may happen. Now I'm all hesitant. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? You're breaking the fourth wall a little bit. <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. How did I... I did Sayori, and then Natsuki, and then Yuri. Oh, I like this one, Aizawa. It has some nice feeling in it. Ah, I'm glad. Does it mean it's better than yesterday's? Mm-hmm. Or, mm, let me think. I don't know. Guess I like them both. <laughs> it's not very helpful, you know. I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad. That's why I just go by my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure exactly how it works. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah, me neither. Ugh. Why don't you at least try giving it some thought? Aw, you want to write something for me? That's so sweet. Yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up hurting, getting hurt at some point. Eh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep that in mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Mm hmm I guess I like happy poems? Wait, sometimes I like sad poems too. Sometimes a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet! Yeah, I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad? I can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. Well, I like happy the most, but sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, sad poem can help give the rain cloud a little hug. Make a nice happy rainbow. Sayori, that's unexpectedly poetic. Eh, it is? Maybe, maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Aizawa. I should go write that down, then. You can read my poem now, okay? Oh, jeez, this is a much longer one. <laughs> Whew. Okay. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine, all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly. There's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe, and I put the bottle on a shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and bottles all in a row. My collection makes me a lot of fr lots of friends, each bottle a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. 
Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go. Like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time's elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends blow through my, my locked front door. Finally, all done. I open up, and in, in come my friends. In they come. In such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting and pleading something. All I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Man, these are giving some fucking dark, depressing shit. Like, she's... This thing, I can tell already, is just... She feels like... Like she's... How would you put it? That She feels like she's the mediator between all of her friends, and that it's her... She feels like it's her job to make everyone happy, but yet every time she tries to do something, she makes it worse. Either that, or like it doesn't do anything, and it only makes her sad in the end. And that she's gonna burn herself out. And just the constant failure of this is repeating in her head over and over, like the echo. That's... Holy crap. Sorry, did you really write this? Of course I did! Didn't I tell you yesterday I was gonna write the best poem ever? Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Manika taught me a whole lot, and I've been really in touch with my feelings lately. I see that. That was kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. Point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a bit, little bit better. Writing is like magic! You got pretty passionate about this, huh? Hope you keep it up. Yeah! Writing's the best! Gotta keep writing until I die! <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself! This has the habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it and no more than a week later. I'm sensing foreshadowing real bad. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the, the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Then Natsuki, and then Yuri. Hmm. Well, I can admit it's better than the last one. It's nice to see that you're putting in some effort. That's good. But I still don't like this at all. It's trying too hard to be serious. Huh? What do you mean by that? Poems don't need to be all deep sounding to express something. It's going to just sound like you're forcing it unless you really don't suck at it. Honestly, don't bother trying to write poems like this until you're on Yuri's level. Natsuki stops short all of a sudden. D -d 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 -don't, don't tell me. Huh? You're not, you're not try just trying to impress Yuri, are you? Well, what are you talking about? And keep your voice down. You know Yuri would love this kind of... Ang this angsty... Just because she's a talented writer doesn't mean I... I mean... Ugh. She looks... It looks like I'm in trouble. I somehow struck a nerve that... Though what I did is beyond me. I'm so done with you. She shoves the poem I handed her back over to me. Take your stupid poem. If you wrote it for someone else, just don't show it to me. Ouch. That's what I get for letting a younger girl step into my business. <laughs> Unless I was a mind reader, I was destined to be in a world of pain from the start. At least Natsuki wasn't the girl I was trying to impress in the first place. I didn't even get to read your poem! Alright, Yuri. Let's show you the poem, and then I think we'll probably call it an episode. Let's see what you've written for today. Yuri stares at the poem with a su surprised expression on her face. Do you like it? I saw it. This one might even better than yesterday's. How'd you even pick up on this so quickly? Just yesterday, I was telling you the kind of techniques worth practicing. Maybe that's why. You did a good job explaining. I really wanted to give it a try, try giving it more imagery. Yuri visibly swallows. <laughs> then her hand appears sweaty. I'm not 
used to this. Used to what? I, I don't know. It's fine. Take your time. She breathes and collects her thoughts. I know that Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I've heard that patience to her. Yeah, just being appreciated like this, I guess. Probably sounds really stupid, but seeing someone motivated by my writing just makes me really happy. Are you saying you've never shared your writing before? Yuri nods. Really? I don't believe it. I really only write for myself, and besides, people would just laugh at me. Do you really think that? Again, Yuri nods. Huh. Even your close friends? Yuri doesn't respond to that. I wonder why. Anyway, do you want to share the poem you wrote today? Yeah. I do. It's with you. Oh jeez, another long one. Alright, the raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty, a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences, well aware that the raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon an urge. The moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread fresh and soft, the raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps, oop, there we go. Uh, or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions into the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread's always handy. Every time I brash my cunning knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic pa uh, Pavlovian conditioning. I slice the bread and I feed myself again. There's a lot of like foreshadowing, foreshadowing in these fucking poems. Off of just like what I know that it says like in the very beginning that you shouldn't be playing this if you have like serious depression and whatnot. Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to Im imagine what this is poems about. I can, I can totally imagine what this is about, and I think I'm, I think I'm right. I have a feeling this is a self- uh, what the fuck do you call it? Self-hurting poem and the urge or the raccoon is the urge to hurt herself and every time she grabs a knife it's satisfying the, the urge of the raccoon. <sighs> it's a bit closer to my preferred writing style using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well... I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels to, for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. So sort of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So some, I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? B because they're embarrassing. People would make fun of me. Don't you have anything like that, Aizawa? Well, yeah, I guess I do. I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best we can do is respect each other and our individualities. Even if it's difficult sometimes, some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I had to learn to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I, I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad you're a good listener. You're good at a lot of things. Writing, listening... There really aren't many people like you, Isa. That's exaggerating a little bit. It's just how I feel. Never thought I'd feel so comfortable sharing my writing, but now I almost feel like I look forward to it. It's just a really nice feeling. And you're to thank for that. It, it's nothing, really. Gary smiles sincere yet, sincerely at me. For just a moment, her timidness seems to disappear. 
Okay, everyone, we're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so Prima could come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Uh, do we really have to plan? Do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really, I don't really do well with last-minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We gotta keep it simple, okay? All right, so I think this is a pretty good place to leave it for today. We got our poems read. There's been a lot of foreshadowing that I'm, I'm sensing the darker tendencies, like Monica breaking the fourth wall and fucking um, Sayori being really dark in her poem and Yuri being even darker in her writing. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm sensing the foreboding that this game is trying to hint at. But I will leave it here for today. Again. Leave it here for today. Once again, this is Doki Doki Literature Club. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Please hit the like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you thought of today's video. And please leave any suggestions down below in the comments of games you'd like to see me play later in the future. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Thank you, and bye bye <laughs> we